All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem associated with 1D dynamics. And in this case, we're gonna be given an acceleration as a function of position. And so here we have a particle that's moving in a straight line and the acceleration is described by this function. And this acceleration is a function of position has units of meters per second squared. This is really, it's just a linear function, had some constant minus a constant times s, and s is the position. And some initial conditions that we have, are, or some conditions that we know, are that when the velocity is, is zero, we know that the position is a zero. And that initial condition will help us answer some questions. And so one of the questions might be, find the velocity at, a, at some time and in this case, it might be like, what's the velocity at, you know, s equals two meters. And then another question might be, what is the pos position when we reach maximum velocity? With this given acceleration, you can go on and get velocity as a function of time, uh, position as a function of time. You know, you can do the math to really get all the information that you need. So just as a quick recap here, when we are given acceleration, as a function of position, you know, all we got to do is incorporate our, some of our relationships. And we know that here we knew before that acceleration is defined as dv dt. Velocity is defined as the time derivative of position ds dt. And then when I substitute away, substitute for time, and I combine these two equations, getting rid of time, I would get that a ds equals v dv. And this, using this relationship, will allow me to relate position and velocity together. And because my acceleration is given as a function of position, I'm going to group the position variables on one side. Everything that's a function of position is going to be on the left, and everything that's a function of velocity will be on the right. So this really gives us a, a sense of how do I relate the velocity to position here. And so this first question right here, it says velocity at s equals two meters, is really saying, can you relate velocity and position together? And so this would tell us, hey, let's use this relationship right here. Can we determine a function for the velocity with respect to position? And it's really just a matter of substituting into this relationship that we have. So here we have a ds equals v dv. The acceleration is a function of position. So I'm going to keep it on the left here. And when I substitute, it's just a linear function, 8 minus 2s ds equals v dv. And I have some, I'm going to integrate this. I have some bounds for the integral. So it'd be like s0 to s, v0 to v here. And now I'm ready to integrate. And when I go ahead and I do the math for this, after I integrate, this is what my relationship looks like. And then I know that in terms of initial conditions, I know S0 is 0, V0 is 0, or V0 and S0 are 0. You know, this will just leave me with like this. And when I go ahead and I solve for the velocity, I would get, and this will have units of meters per second. And this would be my velocity as a function of position. For the velocity at two seconds, I just got to plug and chug. And because of this squared here, this squared here, my answer, it should have two roots, and the answer here will be plus or minus the square root of 24 meters per second, which this would be, if I, if I convert this out, it would be plus or minus 4.90 meters per second. You know, that's my velocity. I have the velocity as a function of position. Now I want to find the position at maximum velocity. So when is my velocity maximum? So I have a couple ways that I can determine the position at maximum velocity. One way would be the calculus approach for any function. If you have a function, you want to find the maximum of that function. You take the derivative with respect to uh, the variable that you are looking for. So in this case here, you know I have velocity as a function or with respect to position here, up here in this cloud bubble. And so if I wanted to find the max velocity associated with this equation, I would take a derivative like this. 
All right, and that would just, you know, if I go through the calculus here, I could do this right here. It's this dv ds is equal to, and then I set this equal to zero to find the position where the velocity is maximum. And so if I did that, you know, I could see that I can just multiply both sides of this equation by two times this funky this equation on the bottom so this is gone and so really my equation comes down to 16 minus 4s equals 0 and this is you know this is true when s equals my solve for s s equals 4 meters and so my velocity would be maximum at s equals 4 meters so that's one way to do this the other way to do this is to remember that max or er min velocities occurs when the acceleration is zero. And here, the max velocity occurs when dv dt equals zero, which means when the acceleration is zero. And in this case, when the acceleration is zero, if I go back to my given function here, this acceleration we had was eight minus two s. So here, when a of s equals eight minus two s equals zero, that will tell me the position when my max velocity occurs. And so here, this would tell me s equals four meters as well. And if I wanted to know the maximum velocity, all I gotta do is plug and chug this s equals four meters back into this velocity relationship here. So this would be 16 times four meters minus, minus, minus two times four meters squared to the one half. And v max will be plus or minus the square root of 32, which is plus or minus 5.66 meters per second. You know, I could even ask uh, for another value. I could ask for the uh, maximum position. Let's say, let's throw in a third, third question here. C, maximum position, or the furthest distance, if you will, from the origin is another way to do it. We would go back down here, one, two, and so three, and we know the max position occurs when my velocity equals zero. And technically, this is also the min right here, or min position occurs when my velocity is zero. And so I already have a velocity function uh, back over here. And so all I got to do is set this velocity function equal to zero and solve for s, and that'll give me the the maximum distance from the origin, or the max and min, actually. So here, if I just take this velocity function and I set it equal to zero, so here, v is equal to, set this equal to zero, and now I solve for s, and this, the roots of this equation, or solutions, s is equal to zero and eight meters, right here, and the max, the s max, the maximum distance or position would be eight meters. And what's interesting is if I were to actually plot the velocity as a function of position here, I get an ellipse. Oh, that's about as good as it's gonna get for me by freehand. And here, this value right here we found earlier this is the maximum velocity this is this 5.66 meters per second and down here is this negative 5.66 and then you'll notice the max the min and max position here's that zero and here's the eight meters here So that gives us a visual of this velocity as a function of position. Graphing is always a very useful tool in our dynamics process in order to visualize the problem. All right, hopefully this was useful and interesting. Uh, take it easy. Structure free.